How's it going, everyone? We are back for some Week 15 Kicker Takes with Denny. We got Denny Carter here. How's it going, Denny? I'm uh, I'm doing well. I uh, I'm recovering from not having Nick Novak in last week's column, but uh, we're going to move on. We're on to Week 15, as one NFL yeah. coach would say. Yeah, I am. I am certainly on to Week 15 after my. My FanDuel kickers from last week. Uh, <laughs> I, I went off the grid even from some of yours, and it just didn't. None of it ended well for me. Yeah, I I had Aguayo pretty much everywhere, and I think he scored ten. So I'm I'm fine with mm. that. But Novak Novak was such. I mean, it, hindsight, you know, being perfect. Um, <laughs> Novak playing the Colts. I don't know why I went with Dan ba- Dan Bailey over him in in the column. I mean. Dan Bailey was a good play, I believe, but opportunity wise, it doesn't get much better than the Colts. And we'll see that, you know, in just a minute. Certainly. And uh, I forgot what I was going to say, but I had something really good to say. <laughs> You're and, distraught. You're distraught. Uh, I, it's gone. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if we knew Jeff Fisher was going to be fired at this time, like if we had known that ahead of time, Falcons D would have been a great pick. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about them. Really. I had them. Uh, so on living the stream, we mm-hmm. JJ and I have been kicking ourselves in direct messages over the past couple of days because we uh, briefly talked about the Falcons defense mm-hmm. before last week's show, and we decided not to mention them. And then you know they go off, they score thirty points, and you know it's like that's like the most devastating streaming defense mix a miss in my life i I can't remember a worse one honestly it was just like from the beginning of the game you knew oh this is gonna be an absolute demolition um but yeah and you'd expect you know with with you guys and sort of the fisher brand you were on the play it uh it just didn't end up uh, in the pile (laughs) um so before we get into this week, um, you did a nice little chart for us that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, if you want to talk about that real quick, right? Well, uh, I talk about in the column, you know, being part of a team opportunity in fantasy, and uh, you know, looking for, you know, players getting getting looks, getting touches, uh, getting just plain old opportunity rather than looking for, uh, you know, excellence or you know, great a great talent and. Uh, that you know, same goes with, with with kickers. The most accurate kickers in the league don't necessarily make great fantasy plays because many of those kickers, uh, like Ryan Suckup this year, who's the third most accurate kicker, are not getting any chances to actually kick the football through the uprights, and that's uh, all we care about. So I, I did a chart showing uh, the the top ten uh, fantasy kickers for 2016, and I looked at their field goal attempts and then field goals made. Field goals made sort of speaks for itself because the the top ten guys are are making these field goals. But uh, the the attempts were interesting. Um, you have seven of the ten uh, kickers are in the top ten in attempts, and uh, only a, a few of them are among the most accurate kickers. Uh, Dustin Hopkins, uh, for instance, uh, number four, a kicker in fantasy uh, for Washington. He is, uh, I believe, in I believe twentieth uh, in uh, in kicker accuracy this year. Okay, so it's not exact. He's not exactly lighting the world on fire, but he's had thirty five field goal attempts, which leads leads the NFL. Uh, Caleb Sturges is not particularly uh, great as far as accuracy goes. Not even the old man uh, Venetari is uh, is very accurate this year, um, and and he is uh, sixth overall in, in fantasy points for kickers. So, uh, you know, if people want to just take a look and see that uh, opportunity is king, and that's why we talk about it constantly on the show. Absolutely. And, you know, the one thing you've been reinforcing all year that screams out to me in this chart is passing. Mm-hmm. There's just passing teams everywhere uh, on here. And, you know, it's funny, Guskowski really only an okay year – but it's because LeGarrette Blount's just cashing in every time, you know, down in the red zone, and he's been yeah. awesome this year. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Guskowski has had, I think, a couple blow-up games, but um, his uh, his opportunity is way down. And mm-hmm. I, 
you know, that might have to do with Brady being out for the first four games. I, I don't really know for sure, but uh, he's also not all that accurate at, uh, like mm. he usually is, which is uh, which is pretty stunning. Uh, so he's yeah, he's 12th right now. He You know, he'll probably finish as a top 10 kicker, but um, no doubt. For people who drafted him in the sixth round, that stings. <laughs> that stings a lot. <laughs> yeah, the auto drafts really get painful with that type of. Oh, stuff. I'm not talking about auto drafts. I'm talking <laughs> about purposeful drafts. I'm talking about the Kenny Darter school of get the best, forget the rest. <laughs> oh boy, Kenny Darter. <laughs> um, so let's get into this week. Uh, pricey play. You have Matt Bryan against the 49ers. Um, I don't think you have to go too deep into this one, other than saying, 49ers, man." I mean. You know, can we just say all the Falcons and log off? Yeah, you know, it's it's just it's just a uh, a dream a dream matchup in a lot of ways. Uh, even, you know, even if Julio's out, we we saw that you know uh, the Falcons uh, destroyed the Rams last week with no Julio. Um, so Matt Bryant is coming off just, and this is actually really nice to see uh, that that this is somewhat reliable. Is that he's coming off a terrible matchup against the Rams? The Rams are allowing one field goal attempt per game this season which is just crazy low and he did not get one single attempt he he scored he still scored six points because the falcons scored six touchdowns but um but uh you know that that is kind of a confirmation that the rams are a tr- tremendously bad matchup but the niners are allowing two field goal attempts per game and eight kickers have scored double digit fantasy points against the 49ers not only that but Bryant has been really quite good at home this season, uh, averaging 11 and a half fantasy points per game uh, in in Atlanta. So everything's going for him. 5,100, very pricey, but I think could very well be worth it. So one thing, um, one, one more little thing, and then we can move on. Uh, me, me and Jason have been going back and forth talking about, you know, for cash games or like high floor like type plays mm-hmm. do you do you prefer paying up like week to week for like say like this week with matt bryant are you are you like comfortable doing that even though he's pricey um you know usually or is it just kind of more random week to week yeah usually i'm gonna say no i'm not i'm not a big fan mm-hmm. of of paying up uh in cash games i think paying up in tournaments is is a it can be a sharp play, uh, mm-hmm. it, it, depending on the week, uh, you know, because you're looking for a guy with a high ceiling who might have low ownership. I mean, that's that's basically what you're looking for. And if you have to bite the bullet and pay it an extra three or four hundred dollars for a kicker, mm-hmm. uh, then that might be worth it in a tournament. I I tend not to do that in cash. Fair enough. Um, some mid price plays. Uh, I think we mentioned him at the beginning. Nick Novak versus the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, the one guy who has not scored eight fantasy points against the Jaguars this year is Dan Carpenter, who I, um, you know, uh, highlighted on this show, uh, very forcefully. And of course, um, Carpenter scored two points. Now, uh, Novak is coming off this 19 point performance uh, against the Colts and the Jags have been one of, you know, Kickers against the Jaguars this year have been one of the most bankable fantasy assets in, in all in the whole game. Uh, and uh, Novak is 4,700, which I think could prove to be a pretty uh, decent steal for this week. Um, I expect him to have uh, really high ownership this week. So, you know, I think he's fine for he's fine for cash. I'm not sure if I'm really uh, in love with him for for tournaments, but. Uh, you know, I highlighted a few stats in in the in the piece this week that show that uh, he probably has a tremendous uh, floor at least. Mm-hmm. Fair to say. Another guy that's had a pretty decent floor the last two weeks, uh, Matt Prater mm-hmm. uh, against the Giants. What are you looking at in this one? Yeah, Prater, who uh, you know the the son of two goats, uh, as I uh, talked about in <laughs> last week's article. It's a fact. You can look it up. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it, but um, so so he sort of cruised to ten points against Chicago last week, and uh, uh, this this stat jumped out to me. Uh, Prater now has at least two field goal attempts in every game this season, except for two. 
so he's getting i mean he's kind of man, almost a lock for for two field goal attempts now now that i say that he's not going to attempt one this week i'm just Warning you. No, he's going to pull a hamstring on the opening kickoff. Oh, dear God. Oh, <laughs> bite, your, bite your tongue, man. Uh, and, and I, you know, I just want to say if Stafford is out, it doesn't look like he's going to be out. But if Stafford's out, uh, then I'm not into Prater at all. Mm. I, I would, I would go Novak or, you know, pay up for Bryant. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the Giants are allowing the most field goal attempts in the league. Um, and although that has come down a bit in the last three weeks, uh, you know, they remain, uh, they remain a really solid, uh, uh, kicker matchup. Yeah. You mentioned Stafford with that injury, you know, if he is out or something, this lion's team, um, really relies on him to, yeah. to manage the game. They don't have a running game. So, no. um, could, could certainly get, get ugly if he's out, mm -hmm. um, for your value play, you went with Kai Forbath. Um, against the Colts, you know, we haven't really looked at the Vikings players in, in a few weeks here. Mm -hmm. This, this might be the one, you know, where we know. come back a little, I, I'm starting to, and I, I'm not happy about it, but you know, yeah, I, uh, I'm not either. Although I, I went in on, uh, on digs last week in, uh, in, in tournaments and you know, that worked out for four catches. Uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, but I, I do, uh, I said in the article, and I stand by it, that Forbath on the main slate on FanDuel mm -hmm. is the only viable minimum priced kicker that I see. Okay. Um, you know, he's a guy who has uh, 26 fantasy points. I sound like Chris Collinsworth. Here's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's been good. He's got grit in this. Now, here's a guy who's who scored 26 fantasy points um, over the past two weeks. And uh, I'm going to switch back to Denny. <laughs> Thank um, you. And, uh, uh, you know, as, as he stepped in for a uh, Blair Walsh, uh, dearly, dearly departed. Um, and, uh, the, the Vikings offense has been, uh, truly, truly bad inside the 20. Uh, so that's been, uh, you know, a benefit for, for Beth. And, and actually, you know, looking back, uh, Blair Walsh, despite being bad, was getting really decent opportunity from week to week. So this, this offense is one that reminds me a little bit of Houston where, you know, they kind of get, you know, within 20 or 30 yards of the end zone and they sputter and they're, hey, you know, this is fine. We'll take three. Um, and uh, the the Colts, like I mentioned, are a fantastic uh, kicker play and, and have been all season. You know, they, it's been the kicker production against Indianapolis has been amazingly consistent. Uh, so for Beth is the minimum price guy for this week. I like that call. And yeah, quick note on um, Sam Bradford. I do I do the red zone stuff every week, and he constantly amazes me because him and Drew Brees are like the guys in terms of completion percentage in the red zone. But like like Bradford's completed 69% of his passes in the red nice. zone. And, and it's like, but they're all two yard passes. You know what I mean? Like none of them go for touchdowns. So. No, I, it, it, uh, Bradford is, is amazing in that he complete, yeah, he completes a lot of passes that mm -hmm. go nowhere and he <laughs> has zero, uh, awareness of, uh, what's around him at any, mm -hmm. any given moment, you know, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, running backs who are blocking for him or trying to, and he, and it looks like it appears that. He just doesn't know who is around him at any given moment. <laughs> and I, I don't know. He's been playing football since he was, you know, probably a child. And 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 you know, one of the greatest college quarterbacks of all time. I don't understand how he can be this inept. <laughs> I don't get it. His ESPN picture just describes all what you just said perfectly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got to get look at here's what he has to do. He has to find a new picture for ESPN. Yes. He needs to get a jersey that fits. Yes. Right. Uh, you know, he stop, He needs to stop wearing the the damn Reno special from 1994. Okay, because that has <laughs> got to that's got to go, and and he needs to get some awareness. Just you know, yeah. aware. I don't I don't understand how this happens week after week. I don't either. Um, but it is amazing. You know, basically, if you're a number one pick and you're not very good, you turn into Alex Smith or Sam Bradford. So mm -hmm. that's what happens. Um. Right. As always, if you want to follow Denny on Twitter, uh, give him a follow at cdcarter13. Um, if you want to read this article, head over to dailyfantasycafe.com. And as always, um, 
if you like watching these videos and you like our uh you know sam bradford takes give us a like and subscribe to the uh the channel here um so as always thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys next week